Hi, I'm Brian Dickinson and I want to tell you about UVM register modelling, what it is and how it can help us. So pretty much all of our DUTs these days have registers, hundreds if not thousands of registers. So for example, here's my memory controller. It has a small block of memory, but it also has some local mode and some status and some counter registers. And all of these are accessed via an APB interface. So to verify the controller, I'm going to need to control and to observe these registers. Firstly, to check their characteristics are correct. They have the right reset value, the right address, the right access policies. And secondly, to check their behavior as part of the design. And this will typically involve setting up some configuration registers, doing uh, read and write accesses to the registers, the memories of the controller, and finally checking the reset values to make sure they are what we expect. So, also we want to collect coverage here, make sure we've written and read perhaps to every bit of our status register. So how could we verify that memory controller? So here I have it instantiated and connected to a, a UVM test bench environment that has a UVC of the APB protocol that allow us to read and write from a DUT. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a reference model of the registers inside of my UVM test bench. This is what we call the register model. This is going to capture the address, size, reset value, all the characteristics of the registers inside the DUT. And then I'm going to run sequences on my APB UVC to read and to write the DUT registers. So uh, if I do a write on the register of my DUT, I'm also going to update the register model with the expected results. Every time I do a read or a write of my DUT registers, I'll also want to do the same operation to my register model to try and keep it consistent with the actual results inside of the DUT. And then during the course of the simulation, I can do consistency checks. I can compare my expected results in my register model against the actual results inside of my DUT. So this sounds like a good plan to verify that memory controller. How can UVM help? Well, firstly, UVM provides a series of base classes to allow you to create the register model. And these are base classes are hierarchical. So you've got a hierarchical architecture where you can define a certain number of bits are a field within a certain register and a certain number of registers go up to make a block of registers and you can have memories and blocks and registers in a hierarchical architecture. You can also capture the characteristics of the register, the address, the size, the reset value, the access policy. You can also link a name to an address register. So this is really good. Instead of having to reference our registers via their address, having to reference register 1000 all the time, we can use the name of the register instead. I can access register mode 0. And the register model knows that mode 0 is at address 1000, but my code is much more readable because I have references to mode 0 everywhere rather than address 1000. And obviously they're going to hold the expected values that we're going to use for consistency checking as well. Uh, we also can build in register coverage into our register model and uh, these models then become reusable IP blocks. So for a standard set of registers that you're using in all of your designs, you can then write the register model once and then reuse that model amongst all of your projects. The second thing that UVM register modeling gives us is a standard series of methods for reading, writing and accessing registers. Now these are called the, the API methods and they allow us to access not only the register model but also the DUT and indeed randomize or access them individually as well as together. So the idea about this is that the test writer can now write a series of sequences to access the registers of the design without having to understand the underlying protocol which is used to access those registers. He can just say, write mode zero, read the status register. So the register sequences are independent of the protocol used to access those registers in a DUT, which means they can be reused with different protocols. And again, register sequences can become important verification IP that can be reused within and in between projects. There's also a number of built-in predefined sequences for common register operations and memory operations. Uh, there's a nice standard walking one pattern for testing memory, which is really useful to have. 
So these sequences come in two forms. You can have a sequence which accesses front door register access or back door register access. And in the next slide, we'll try and explain the difference between the two. So first of all, front door access. Okay, All of our write and read operations are front door by default. And in front door, the, uh, the write or the read operation creates a generic register operation. And this needs to be converted to the transaction item used by your UVC. So there must be an adapter to do this. So the adapter okay, converts the generic register operation from the read or the write into a specific UVC transaction item, passes that down to the sequencer. The sequencer passes it into the driver and then does an operation, a transaction action via the interface on the front door of your DUT. Now obviously this needs an adapter and the adapter should come as part of your UVC so the developer of the UVC should write the register adapter. So that's front door access. Back door access is via a hierarchical path name. So it's like a standard Verilog out of module reference. Okay, It's a direct path name down to the variable in the DUT which stores the value of the register that you're trying to access. Now obviously this requires a path name and more importantly it requires a path name which is kept up to date with the changes in your DUT. Now normally this is part of your register model um, but occasionally it can be created in other forms but usually we build it into the register model and then the read or the write operation can extract that path name from the register model when it does a backdoor access operation. Okay, so that's front door and back door access sequence operation. Um, one last thing to have a look at is prediction. Okay, and prediction is the, the art, and it is an art, in keeping your register model up to date with what we think is in the DUT. Now, there's various different forms for doing this, and if you're interested in this, there's a separate training byte on different prediction modes. I encourage you to search for that in the support site. Um, but we'll show you explicit prediction in this particular slide. So, we have a predictor component. This is provided to us by UVM. We just instantiate it, configure it, and connect it. And we connect it to the monitor. We connect it to the analysis port of our monitor from our UVC. So our UVC monitor captures all the transactions being carried out in our DUT. These are passed to our predictor. The predictor uses the adapter of the UVC to convert the UVC transaction into a generic register operation. And it uses that generic register operation to update your register model and keep it up to date. And of course, it obeys the access policy when it does that. So for example, if you're trying to write to a read-only register, the write will fail. OK, so um, this is register modeling in UVM. And here are some of the acknowledged benefits in using register modeling. So first of all, productivity improvements. So uh, you don't or very rarely write the register model yourself. We normally generate the register model from some kind of specification, such as the IEEE standard IP exact or from any other kind of XML or spreadsheet content. Uh, so this is really easy to keep the model up to date. If something changes in our model, we update the specification and regenerate the register model from that. Uh, you also have ease of use because your test writers now can use those simple built-in register methods, the API calls, to do read and write operations on your registers with no knowledge of the protocol that's actually being used by your DUT. And we can adapt existing register sequences to use the new register model nice and quickly and easily, for example, using the explicit prediction we showed you on the previous slide. And remember, there's a whole series of built-in testing sequences provided by UVM to enable us to get quick results. And these are fully configurable, so you can do an operation on all the registers in your design and then use a separate switch to exclude individual registers or groups of registers. Uh, and the whole thing is, is, is revolving around reuse here. So the APB, uh, sorry, the, the sequences that we create, the register sequences we create, these can be reused in different projects with different protocols, with different interfaces. The register model for our block can be used in a system level simulation together with other models from other blocks in our design. And the register model itself is reusable for other projects. 
So if you're interested in finding out more about register modeling, uh, Cadence has a, a course on UVM register modeling. Uh, in this course, we'll show you how to generate a register model, how to integrate and connect the model into a verification environment, how to simulate that model with pre-built and user-defined register sequences. We'll show you different ways of prediction to keep that register model up to date with a DUT. And finally, we'll show you how to model quirky and strange and unusual register behavior inside of your register model. Mm -hmm.